i think there is beauty in everything what normal people would perceive as ugly i can usually see something of beauty in it by alexander mcqueen starting with this quote a very good afternoon to one and all present here i hope everyone is safe and healthy well i am nandini kutti from fashion design department shall be the host for the day it's my privilege to extend a warm welcome for the speaker of the day ms sushila prakash kerala mural artist and art educator may i now welcome upon head of the fashion design department ms m mohammada begum to deliver the welcome address and to one and all present here i express my heartfelt gratitude to our beloved founder chancellor ac shanmugam and our honorable president engineer acs arun kumar sir for motivating us to conduct this online programs i also take this opportunity to welcome the high officials of our university i am happy to welcome our joint register dr s ramu dean dr s manivanan deputy dean academics dr ar arnachalam and deputy dean administration professor k sandil kumar sir for the support in organizing this i feel immensely happy in welcoming our today's resource person ms sushila prakash who is a kerala mural artist and art educator for accepting our invitation on behalf of fashion design department i welcome you all i also take this opportunity in welcoming all the participants from who have joined from all over the nation and will again enjoy learning something new in this workshop once again i welcome you all thank you Thank you ma'am it's my privilege to introduce about today's chief guest ms sushila prakash she has been a lawyer for more than over 25 years she became a mural artist because of her imminent passion and interest towards art what from mr sang wal oil painting and original stained glass painting from mr ilango from cm studio she is very expert in oil acrylic pencil charcoal sketches mixed media and occasionally watercolor she has created more than over 300 works of art across various styles and genres with a special focus on traditional indian art forms particularly kerala mural paintings over the years she have trained hundreds of students at beginner intermediate and advanced levels through both online and in person classes she has initiatively undergone a fundraiser workshop with samprampana on kerala mural painting for support of local folk artists and underprivileged children in rural areas of tamil nadu we welcome you on board ma'am thank you very much today i am really honored to be here with you all and share a little bit of knowledge that i have on this art i take it my pleasure to thank mamuda begum hod of the fashion design department and nandini kuti who both have been uh, very uh, helpful in organizing this program it's really my pleasure to be a part of this program and uh, i also take this opportunity to thank all the uh, faculty who have been involved in bringing this program on stage right now i've been an artist for the past 25 30 years uh, on par with my um, advocate career as an advocate today we will be doing a madhvani um, from the basics i'll be i'll try to teach you a little bit of the basics and uh, i'm sure you can put this on to your further learning of this art and i suppose this will be a kind of a foundation for your for the learning of this particular art as you all know madhubani art comes actually arises from the northern part of india that is mithila mithila you all must have heard it was 
the place the place of birth of sita sita of the ramayan sita's father the king of mithila this uh, art uh, is almost aged 2500 years and uh, it is known that janaka the king of mithila and father of sita wanted all the artisans of mithila to paint on the walls and floors of mithila at the time of sita's wedding with rama so he called for all the artisans and we have to be proud today that 99% of the artisans were women so it is learned that all the women artists came forward and started decorating the walls of mithila describing the birth of sita the marriage of sita with rama and there on the entire occasion were portrayed in the form of 2d painting these are also murals in a way because they were all painted on the walls and i would like to bring about a few things here they used to call uh, these paintings on the wall as bitti chitra bitti chitra means painting on the walls that is the murals on the walls and aripana aripana was the painting on the floors like what we do today even in the south and of course on the north also in the north also as uh, uh in tamil it is called kolam and in hindi it is called rangoli and these days we also use color in madhubani there are about three styles one is the khachni which means hatching hatching means doing it with lines strokes second is bharni that is shading inside that is the filling of the outlines of the images first you do the outline and later it's filled with color or even black black is also of course a color so either it is filling up with black or with color third one is godana that was developed later on which means tattoos godana means tattoo so there are three different styles so here i am going to show you two different styles that is the kachni and barni which forms the basic of this madhubani painting at the beginning at the outset i would like to show you some of my paintings some of them are half done and some of them are finished now you can have a look here this is actually an episode from the ramayana this is sita going with the chariot to do a puja devi puja so here you can see two different kinds of trees with a peacock and two bulls riding the uh, taking the chariot along and there is a small animal the dog here with of course a tulsi plant here the corner and there are two in order to depict two different kinds of trees the bark of the trees are done in a different way one is with the kachni that's the hatching and the the other one is also hatching but it has a design so this is one of the paintings and of course like uh, uh, i have used very few colors i have not filled it with colors the side this half is completely black and white and you see that the other half is filled with a little bit of color the next one is the shiva he is also dry, uh, riding on a bullock and here you see krishna there are different kinds of trees here this of course is half done because i have to fill in the leaves and a few flowers and um, 
this is Parvati, and of course here you can see the Ganga. And here there is a peacock here. The next one is Radha and Krishna. Here. This is actually called the Burmi style, wherein I have to fill in with a bit of color. And of course, this is Burmi and then Kachni over here. So you have both the styles, the Burmi and the Kachni both together. And here again, I have chosen to do a bit of uh, black and white, uh, a little bit for the outside because I didn't want to make it very heavy. As students of fashion design, you all would be knowing, all would be knowing that too much of color makes things very heavy and it has to be balanced. Here, this is again completely the Kachni style because here you can see that nothing is filled with color except of course the eye and the eye of the skin. So the rest of it is just Kachni style. Sorry. And here again, I've done a completely black and white painting. <coughs> and here, the fish in different styles. <coughs> here, this is a fish mandala with a little bit of color here. And it's completely done with scales of fishes, scales on the fishes, and a few designs. This is widely known as the Panke Gar, which is mostly painted near a lotus pond. So here, as you can see, it's filled with basil nut leaves. The entire betel nut leaves have been painted with green, that is the burni, and the kashni has been done after the burni. And here again, this is a clove tree done by Ganga Devi, originally done by Ganga Devi, which I have replicated. But in her work, one can see that this part of the painting has been left in being un, I mean, it's totally incomplete, but I don't know for what reason she has uh, left it incomplete. She's a very famous painter of the uh, Mithila uh, area, and she's also an award winner, national award winner, and her style, I have imbibed a lot because I, really love her style. Her style is very intricate and her lines are always perfect. That is what you have to achieve while doing your work, either on paper or on cloth or on uh, fabric or on any other surface that you can do. When I talk about surfaces, I would really like to tell you that we can, one can actually do his or her work on, um, on uh, any surface, like uh, canvas or cloth or on handmade paper. Usually handmade papers are picked for this purpose and you have to actually uh, see that the, your work, that is as you work, the work should not spread. That is the only basic thing that you will need while doing your work. And I can also talk to you about the materials that we generally use for making a mudbin. 
this is what I have as a handsome sheet handmade paper. And over that, first what you will need is a pencil and an eraser. Okay. After this, we go to our drawing. That is pencil and eraser are used for basic drawing, basic skeleton work. But later we have to do a little bit of the filling work or the kachni work. So we have to move on to either nib and holder. Nib, you have to select a nice sharp nib. This comes separately and the holder comes separately. You can just fix the nib like this and fix it tight to any holder that you are going to use. So it's going to be like this. And we need a special waterproof drawing key. This comes in a very small bottle. And this is from Camel Company, which is widely used. And this is waterproof. So you can use this on cloth, on the fabric that you want to do. And also on a canvas if you want to do a ball thing. So after this, we go to other alternative materials with which you can do on uh, either canvas or on paper. This cannot be used uh, on fabric. This, uh, these are different kinds of fine liners uh, that uh, one can use. Uh, a few of them are from paper castle and uh, a few of them are from Bristro. And I have micron tip pens also. All these are waterproof pens and you can use them. But it's better not to use on fabric. You can get special marker pens for fabric about which I will talk to you. And now regarding the color. Those who want to do black and white are most welcome to do black and white. Those who want to color them, if you think color matters a lot, you can do the colors for your Madhubani painting. That is an option. When it comes to colors, you can use simple material that can be used on paper and on canvas. One is the sketch pens, normal sketch pens. And the other one is brush pens. These are also normal uh, colors, which are not water. If you pour water, or if it is just touched with water, it spreads. So we, we cannot use that on fabric. And the next colors that I would like to talk to you about is uh, these drawing inks, uh, again by Camel, which are widely available everywhere. These are the colored drawing inks. These cannot be used on fabrics once again. I will come to those which you can use on fabric in some time. And another alternative set of colors that you can use is these transparent photo colors. Photo colors are highly pigmented and you have to use a lot of water to make it light and dark also. These are very dark. As I said, they are very highly pigmented. Okay. So, these are about uh, the colors that one can use on uh, on the canvas or on paper. Now coming to fab uh, fabrics. There are two options. One is the acrylic colors from Fevicryl. But if you use this, you have to use the medium and mix it along with the color. But one disadvantage that you have while using this fabricral acrylic colors is on the fabric is the fabric gets very um, what can I say uh, uh, it becomes very hard like it will, when you suppose you are painting a sari the place where you are going to apply these colors are not going to easily fold along with your other folds of the sari these may stand out so it's 
my advice is you need not use these colors but you have to use a lot of medium suppose you want to paint uh, i mean make a small work on a kerchief or something or a corner of a dupatta okay fine but not otherwise these are fabrica acrylic colors which you can use on fabric again you can mix them with the, uh your medium and then these come in around 12 colors 10 shades 10 shades and it has to be stored upside down always and uh, these also make very good for outline purposes for uh, your fabric without mixing the medium okay. and the next is i would like to tell you is for the fabric you have one more option that is the cello marquee permanent marker cello marquee permanent marker which is available as a pack of 8 on amazon it's available on amazon and the outlines can be done with a black marker these are very helpful while you do a work on small scale but suppose you want to use make uh, make painting on sari or uh, long dupatta that as i said these fabric colors acrylic colors mixed with a lot of medium can be used on your uh, sari and dupatta and your dresses what we are going to see. so this is about the colors i think uh, we should start working on these um Uh, i mean like they are good to a few borders uh, uh, along with uh, you know the other figurines of uh, one or two figurines uh, and uh, some important motifs of the month mm-hmm. so uh, to make it easy um, i will show you how uh, it's worked with the help of this camel what to join in some of you who are ready to join me in this uh, uh drawing right away can start along with me have a small cup of water to dip your ink i mean your uh, nib and make a start those who to have the nib and holder and ink can use these fine liners which i already told fine liners number you may ask for and those are 0.2 mm and 0.3 mm you can also have a triple zero brush to fill in the colors as i said the burni style i'll show you both the style pashmi and the burni and i suppose you can start along with me the borders are generally box in between lines that is a pair of lines. and uh, the distance between the lines depend upon the size of the pattern that you are working so we will just start with simple design simple borders i'll teach you i'll try to teach you about uh, uh, five six borders as of now as of today and you can keep a cup of water there to start with the the piece so here we go these are the lines that you have for the pair of lines that i just took you for they are worked in pairs and try to make it as thin as possible and these tend to dry very fast if you are going to sit on a table in a meeting room or write a fan which i am actually writing so mine just get dry very fast so i am keeping my and uh, let it go water can you excuse that so now here we start with the two lines here the next one can be to go on the set line here and my distance between the two lines that is two pairs of lines one and two is it could be about one uh, centimeter or maybe slightly less than one centimeter okay so now i will show you 
we can do some diagonal lines right now. And the distance between the two diagonal lines should be equal to out throughout the pattern. Okay. You can work from one end until the other. Okay, now that I have shown you with this, we will move on to Brustro Fine Liner, which I will be using for a quick gel. I am using number two gel, that is 0.2 mm gel. And I'm going to do the rest of the work. So here, secure again. As I told you, the design for work between two lines, two horizontal pattern lines. This is, these two lines are very important in particular because almost all the figures are done. Okay, now we will move into the next design. You can do along with me or observe and you can follow the video in the time that you want for any time. So this these forms very good borders for your fabric, especially you know small borders that you want, or you can also combine different uh, designs as a set of uh, borders. Okay, now I'm just showing you a few very important borders so that you can just try them out as of now and then proceed later when you want to expand your uh, knowledge on the part. Being creative is a real boon and I suppose all you fashion designers are very creative and you can just use this as a foundation to your creative ideas and to some useful work for the fashion system. So this is another set of triangles, but all these are such that is the line. The next one we will go to a slightly better design now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go parallel and vertical lines here and and I'm leaving some space I'm going to do another set of lines do the same pattern as I've done on the other. Now I'm going to do a horizontal line and from here I'm going to make this as a leaf. So here I cannot leave this end because in Madhubani say that the more filling in you do, the more intricate your work is will be and the more expansive it will be. So this is a point on your uh, selling your product once you do all these, uh, become a fashion designer and uh, price your uh, uh, your works. So you have to make it very intricate. So see that you draw lines with equal space. So this can be continued as a board. Now your cycles to have to continue. Cycles have to board. What I'm teaching you is the basic design for some uh, lines uh, to this board. Okay, the next one is uh, a small flower that we can see here. I'm trying to just uh, you know break it down into pieces so that uh, you can understand how it is done. It may not look very complicated. See here, and I just join these 
line curve, making it look like a flower. And just trying to fill in, giving it a nice fill. Now we will do a line. Again, it's two lines. And short again, diagonal line to the middle and darken this to the highlight. Here, once again, the design continues. So, this way you go on to the end of the course. You don't need to worry if uh, this design just comes halfway, I mean, like uh, this design uh, ends half, because that doesn't matter at all. So, this is how these um, basics are done. And now again for the next pattern, we will do a slightly one. I'll show you a fish. Try to make it very easy job. Now a fish. You can do like okay. And And from here, you can do extensive lines okay, this way, and you can do the final thing like this. You can just give it a cut here and a cut here. You can draw the scale here. Don't draw two scales, two small ones. Don't do it that way because it's very cramped. So you can take it and fill it up. Fill it. But now, what we will do is draw the eye here, like this, and draw a small center. Your diagonal line. Here also we can use your line. This way you can do a fit. And your Okay. So this way we can connect to it. Next I will show you the one. Now we are going to shunt. Yeah. And here look, it is not easy. So this way you can finish the shot. If you are using the colors, you can use inside this area, and the shot, the next shot will be just beside this, and you can fill in this area with some patterns also. So now we go to the next um, pattern. This is a very pretty pattern. A very simple also. Now, what we'll do is we we'll take the circle side. You should know that on top of this, we leave a small gap, but whereas here I'm joining the uh, line to the basic line. So, what we have to do is the next line. So 
Same way on the side. So, the so very simple design, but very simple design can do the entire thing. Now, what you can actually do is you can fill in your color here, or if you want to do a black and white. Okay, now we go to the next. I suppose I'm not going too fast for those people who are following, I mean, uh, doing the work around the thing. So this is another design. You can uh, make your own design, but uh, see that you don't move away from the uh, original work. You have to, you may have to read a lot of company design, a lot of and patterns, and you can incorporate anything of your of your own style once you like. So this is something that you can. See, the patterns may be the same, but the way you are going to do it can be different. Now, I'll show you one more. And draw a When you draw a semi circle, you have to move on. The distance between these two lines and the distance between these two lines has got to be equal. Otherwise, the shape of the um, semicircle may change. Okay, uh, it may not look good. So that is the distance between these two lines and the distance between these two lines. That's what we see. So now another thing. So that they are equally equal. Right. Now, as I said, Madhubani, most of the Madhubani, 90% of the Madhubani pattern will have two, two lines. Right. This way, we got to the line here and Again, can be done very simply. You can highlight your and fill in with, with some of the patterns that are not repeated. You don't need pattern, but all the filling in will have to be in size. Okay, so now we are done with about uh, 10 patterns, simple patterns. Now we can do the motive. Uh, I'll show you a few motives. I'll show you how to do a parrot first. Okay. Now you can draw with a pencil and then later you can uh, do the ink part of it. 
but I will do directly to the Now you draw a circle and the icon. Okay. Now your palette made very easy. Okay. You don't remember that Matsani painting is a 2D painting. It does not have an anatomy. Very different from uh, the other styles of painting. Doesn't have uh, anatomy, but still, you know, these uh, pictures, uh, their drawings really speak to us in their own way, provided we understand them well as we do it. So now, here. As I said again, it's a 2D painting. It's a like a So, filling in is very important, most important aspect of a Makhani book. See now. Okay, so this is how, uh, this is one type of parrot that's a Makhani. Now we have to fill in this, never leave a work empty with the design of your choice. You can't probably do something very weird. It has to be a straight line or a diagonal line or a horizontal line or maybe a curved line like this. You can't draw a flower pattern inside. Very clear. So you have to go with the natural flow. So this is how they do a pack. There are different kinds of packs. One of them. Now we will go for to do a loop. All these are very important uh, motifs. As I said, you cannot leave all these spaces empty. Just fill in with a short line. And all these also have to be done as well. Now I will show you 
uh, a finished uh, piece that I have done for you. And you can fill in your lotus like all lines and quiet. Check. Okay. So like this, you can give a finishing to your group. Next is the fish. I will show you how to do the skeleton work of the fish. Now it's like this. And you just bring it down. Always have like this. And like this. Just extend this a little bit. And join it like this. And give a cut here and a cut here. Okay. Now, what we do is we will try to divide this again once again into small groups. Draw the eye here. Okay. See, like with this uh, line, you make your fish smiling. Like this, you can make it look grumpy according to the situation. Now, I'm drawing two lines here and I'm going to draw one more line here. Now, I'll draw one more line here and And here, again, you can do a lot of diagonal lines here. The same way, diagonal lines here. Okay. Now, I'm going to draw. See, just with the help of line, how much work we do. Okay. They have to be equally placed. And it has to join from this end to this end. Don't leave it the half way. Give it a proportion. Line, probably line. Like, and of course, your to the end and draw your scale. Crowded, but small scale. It looks intricate, but it's not it's nice. Do your scale, your passion, so that it pays to work even if you would like to try to scale. Do all your imagination, like how to copy. It's not, not necessary that you copy like. You can be very creative. You can draw another small fish with the body of a big fish. Even those kind of styles. But uh, see that it goes with the flow. Uh, Therefore, look very odd. It's like okay, so now we are done with this. Next, I'm going to take you slightly sentimentally into the Mithila uh, approach you know, of that work. It's called the Naina Jogan. Naina Jogan is actually a goddess who was possessed with magical powers that guards against anybody casting their evil eye. Um, 
Actually, Naina Jogin uh, is done in two different forms. One is a lady uh, who wears her ordni, that is the uh, a little bit of the sari from the back she takes, and covers half her face so that she doesn't reveal her entire face. Okay, the other one is it's also depicted uh, like two snakes, uh, intersection of two snakes. And I will show you that because it's much a simpler form and it is drawn uh, in a minute. This is like this. Like, okay. And the next, the intersection between. Like, okay, this is actually an intersection of two snakes. How do you make these snakes? Very simple. It's like, and the eye of it. See, that's why, you know, I said they always did in 2D forms their work, but still, you know, they could, um, they spoke to their painting. See, when you just draw two lines and intersect it, you can never know how to go about it and make it a snake. But they have made it so simple that, uh, you know, we can, by the very look of it, we can make out that these are snake. Again, you can just, uh, it's not left empty. You can just fill in all these with these kind of lines. Okay, the same way you can start from here and you do like this. See here, I have the finished form of the uh, Naina Jogin. It's called the Naina Jogin. You can make a note of it. You can also uh, Google it. Google for Naina Jogin and find out the details. Okay, now let's uh, get a little bit colorful and uh, I'm going to just uh, use plain sketch pens, sketch pens to color my uh, pictures, uh, my borders. I'm going to say, uh, take some, uh, maybe some bright colors. Uh, now, yeah, here. Yeah. These colors I'm going to use as of now. Maybe I can go on later uh, with some more colors. I've taken some purple, one uh, pink, uh, yellow, green, and orange. One thing about Madhubani painting is they will always have a yellow in uh, their work. Okay, I'll just show you a few uh, few ways of doing the uh, colors. See here, I have just done something for you, which you can add. See, see so that we can save some time and go into deeper things. Uh, see here, I have used the, the orange and the pink for, for the first uh, border. See, you can also use this as a set of border on one side. And the same can be repeated on the opposite side if you want to do a sari which is very little work with that. You are going to make the borders very bright and uh, very intricate and uh, much better. Okay, so yeah, uh, so you can just have a look at these, uh, and uh, all these are done with two, two lines each. Uh, now here I have not done second line, so I can just add a second line. To Right. Yeah, here again I have done two lines. I think the color has gone Uh yeah. Here I have done two lines and I have painted inside. I have used a little bit of red. Yeah. The red. Yeah. The red and the purple I have alternated. 
and uh, this can be a break of the monotony with just that. If you want, of course, you can continue with your color code. And here, that which I showed you on the right, I have done with the color. And uh, see, this is only burning. I have not done any work here. This is just burning. And this is Kashmir. I have interlinked both together. The same way here, this is only Kashmir, this is only burning. Here it's only burning, and once again here you can see. First I have done the burning, and then after that I have done the touching. So like this, you can uh, you know interchange your ideas and put them together and do good work. Okay. Now, um, yes. Yeah. Now we will go on to the next one. Um, I think I will show you how a peacock is done. I've just done the outline for quick reference. Now we will go in for the outline. See, in this Madhubani, um, uh, first what we have to do is the outline. Uh, unlike many other arts, we have to do the outline first and then fill in the details and the color. Okay, so now I have, this is the way you have to draw a paper. Draw along with it. I have actually drawn it, but uh, you know, I have not done the scaling the long time. Okay, so now you have to draw on a different and make the body of the paper join it. You can do the See, these can be used as greeting cards also, uh, as you do the work. It need not be this broad, but also fine. Not a you just fill in the outline with that. Now here, start the detail. I've just constructed the epoch and I'm going to start doing the detail. Now here for the Once again, two lines. And now, I'm going to this. Now, I'm going to do the big feather area. For the feather. Okay. Now let's finish this. All the two lines. All this can be done on fabric. Uh, you can use a hoop uh, to fix your area, or you can actually use some clips uh, and uh, fix your fabric on for hard board, and you can also work on that. Can also fix it with the tape. I will show you how to do that part. That will be helpful for you when you're doing 
uh, this kind of a work. You can uh, work on a sari, on a tablecloth, on a pillow cover, on a bed spread. Uh, yes, of course, sari and sari are so common, but still, you know, they are very expensive. And uh, the more uh, detailing you give, the more expensive you are. Uh, Okay, your painting is done. Oh, now. Okay. Sure. Let's start from the beginning. Um, become sure. To divide this by the part that is right, and maybe one more. And your with the help, you can just draw one single line. Same way you can draw down the same. Fill in the whole part. Before that, what we will do is we have to use the color and fill it up with the color. For the filling up of the color, uh, here I think uh, to make it very easy, I will use a brush pen. Yeah. Here. And I'll just fill in the color so that uh, you would understand how it is actually done from paper. You need not bother about the patches that it makes because you're going to fill in your design and the patches. Or you can use uh, these uh, inks as I told you and fill in the color. You have to use a broad brush and fill in the color, fill in the ink. I fill in this part and we will do the black work on this. These are waterproof liners, so your black will not spread on the and people here. This is one of the best. It need not be even big days, it can be small or big, it can be up or down, depending upon the way you like to place it. Totally depends upon your creative. And you have draw the feathers. These lines. If you want to do two, three colors, also you can do it. This way you just fill in the whole thing. Now, what we will do is we will fill in these also some pattern. Right. 
and of course your again or your imagination of the two bottles. Okay, after doing this again, once again, here you can fill it up with the line. But this Follow them and then the line. Anyway, now here, what we will do is we just fill in these second lines to set up the line. Like and this is quite good. Okay. Now what we will do is we can actually color them. I will set pens now. You can also use the rough pens. Coloring them, just filling it up. You can use a, a brush pen, you can use watercolors, and color, like any color that you have in hand. But while doing it on fabric, be sure that you go for fabric color and not something that is lead. You have to keep that in mind. As I said, yellow color is the most important color for the Madhubani uh, people of Madhubani uh, because uh, they feel that in the prosperity they use the haldi for yellow color. Okay. The red and the deep. Okay, now with the red, I cut off here and there. You always use the bright colors but not body colors for somebody. They would use nice bright colors like yellow, orange, green, and all that, but uh, they never use body color. I want to notice that if you have uh, a good eye for color, coloring and again as Now again, I will go for the thing here that you can. Okay. 
Pero... It may look like a child's work. Yes, uh, many that I said to they are just to be painting. Uh, Maybe you can just leave them plain also, no harm. But uh, I will change the eye part and just make it like this. Make it more interesting. And all these can be filled in with online. Okay, now we will do see the peacock can be seated somewhere. Okay, so. How to do the uh, part of the uh, tree or you know, the branch and things like that, and the leaves. Yeah. 
Yes, Madhvani, I would also like to say that uh, the usage of scale is not done for any work. Even for uh, anything that you do, like a mattress, it's called uh, uh, it's called patiya. Uh, even for that, to gently, you know, you don't uh, uh, use the scale at all. So to design the food, you don't use the scale. So here you can draw all your beads. You can see, you can also make from a fruit also because the peacock is sitting there. It may also want to, I mean, it may have that on this branch. Just because it's seen some uh, fruit, so you can draw a fruit like You can uh, do it with the uh, with red color. So you can draw a fruit like yours and red along the tree that. Uh, Wherever you feel like, you can draw some tools, but don't uh, make it look too crowded, too many tools. Don't make too many tools because it may not look very nice. Here and there, add the beauty to your whole painting. Like this, you can you can just imagine and um, uh, finish the uh, painting, but never do uh, just color without any outline. Okay. It has to have an outline. That is the set rule of Madhubani painting. First the outline and then only color and then only filling up. So today we have... Uh, Learned a lot on Madhubani basic uh, about the Kachni, about Varni, and I would also like this. Like this, you can just finish the paint. Okay, I will just show you a little bit of the finished work so that you can have an idea uh, as to how you can just finish the painting. It can be made as a card. Or uh, if you're using it on fabric, you can do, uh, I mean, on a pallu of a sari, you can uh, do uh, two on either side or anything as per your imagination. You can just make it big, you can make it small, you can add a lot of things to it. Uh, see, the here I have done the uh, fruits in orange color. Okay, like this, you can work a lot on these uh, kind of designs. Okay, and uh, one more thing I would like to uh, tell you about the 
motives, what they signify. Um, you can also make a note of it and use it uh, any other time. Uh, like it is uh, a pair of fish means harmony and marital happiness. Uh, lotus uh, defines feminine uh, features, uh, uh, feminine aspects. Speak of uh, means the divine love, knowledge, and prosperity. Swan indicates purity, freedom, and spiritual attainment. The deer is the symbol of desire. As you all know, the period dates to Ramayana. Uh, so Sita was after uh, the deer, uh, which was actually it was a desire by Maricha to attract uh, Sita. So. Um, uh, he came in the form of the deer. Uh, so it's a symbol of, it's considered as a symbol of desire in the Ramayana. And the cow, it, uh, it signifies divine bounty of earth. It's considered sacred and it is more of a maternal figure. Okay, so uh, we have finished uh, this much. And uh, if you are more interested in uh, learning, you can always approach me through your faculty. I'm here to help you. And uh, there are a lot of other motives also like uh, the sun and the moon. Here I have just uh, made uh, some sketchings of the sun and the moon. All these are colored and they are worked upon. And uh, here again, there is a peacock. Here you can, there are different kinds of peacock. As I said, you can uh, do the peacock this way also. And uh, see here is the sun and the moon. Uh, how, is the, how is the the female and the male? And uh, those are also colored. And this is actually the patia which I was talking of. I will just do the outline and show so that. Uh, you can uh, do it later on also. This can be used as a wall hanging. You can do it on the fabric and you know, on silk fabric also you can do it and use it as a framework. And not necessary that you have to you know, use it as a I mean, though you are doing it on a silk material, it's not necessary that uh, you have to use it only as a sari or a tablecloth or a cushion cover or something like that. But you can just use it as such as a framework. So here, as a wall decor, that's what I meant. See here, now I have divided this into... I'm making all squares here. And the edges like a carpet finish, like the tassel. You can just give these kinds of lines with a small pinhead finish. You can make this as big as you want. You do it on a silk cloth, you can make it very colorful. And also, you know, see, even for these, you for Burmese style, you can use silk uh, uh, painting, the uh, paints on. Uh, you get it in Febio, it's called the Seta silk. Uh, so you can use those also. See here, you can just fill in either black and white, uh, you can see the black and white, or fill in the alternated with color. So, this is also a very nice, uh, it's also a very nice home decor. And this is uh, something which we generally use on occasions where we sit on this. Uh, this is the patia. P A T I A. That is the mattress. In, uh, in summer, we call it pie. So, this is a thin, uh, like, flow mattress that you use. This way you can finish the mattress and it looks so nice once you finish it. 
and about the figurines here once again i have uh, done this work i can show you the finished work of this man also see here the finished work as i already showed you this is a part of a figurine from uh, a bigger painting uh, which i showed you earlier now uh, it is fair uh, the one minute i will show you the picture so that you will have a better idea see here this is the guy that i picked out this is uh, sita going to do her gauri puja okay so um so here you can see this guy standing here holding the puja uh, the thing uh, wherein he would have put some flowers and some water also uh, carrying it you know flowers something like this so i've just uh, brought it down here and uh, this is the finished uh, detailing of this figure okay so i think i have uh, made myself clear uh, on all this uh, and uh, with this uh, we come to the end of our session um, i hope uh, you have all enjoyed uh, 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 this uh, art of madhubani which is uh, 2005 year 500 years old and one of the oldest art of india and uh, please so uh, you can go ahead in developing all these uh, uh making more and more useful things out of this just not uh, designing doesn't mean only the fabric but it, there is a lot more uh, you know uh, varieties on which i mean aspects on which you can use uh, this kind of a painting i wish you all good luck and i thank the faculty of Uh, this mtr university and especially the department of uh, fashion designing uh, and having called me and it's a great opportunity for me it's a feather on my cap and i thank you so much mohammeda begum and nandini kuti and all the other faculty of uh, the fashion designing and uh, thank you so much i suppose uh, you will go in more uh, expansion of this art learn a lot further and uh, see very good uh, stuff soon thank you so much it was a really wonderful session given by you ma'am uh, appreciation letter will be displayed as a part of token of love and appreciation from our side please do accept thank the appreciation you. letter ma'am thank you so much uh, nandini i am really it's a feather on my cap thank you so much Thank you, ma'am. May I now call upon Ms. Ambreen Shahab, Assistant Professor of Fashion Design Department, to deliver the vote of thanks. Good afternoon to one and all present here. On behalf of Dr. M. J. R. Education and Research Institute, I take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks for this e-workshop organized by our institute. Our heartiest thanks to our honorable president, Engineer A. C. S. Arun Kumar Sir. for accepting our request a special thanks to vice chancellor dr s gita lakshmi ma pro vice chancellor dr avi chandra sir provost dr g gopal krishna sir our registrar dr c b palani vidya sir a special thanks to our joint registrar phase 2 dr s ramalingam sir dean s manivanan sir deputy dean academics phase 2 dr a r arnachalam sir and deputy dean administration phase 2 professor sen k sindil kumar sir and all the hods and staff members of various department A special thanks to our chief guest, Ms. Sushila Prakash, for sharing her knowledge. I would like to thank Ms. M. Mahmooda Begum, Head of Fashion Design Department, and other team members, Ms. Nandini Kuti and Dr. P. Harshini, Mr. Ganesh Babu, for their support in the completion of the event. I would like to thank all the participants for participating in this program. Before I conclude the session, the feedback link will be provided in the chat box. so i hope you all enjoyed the session i am thanking you all behalf of our department there are many upcoming events so please stay tuned till then it's nandini signing the world
Brings a smile up to my lips Oh, fascinated I'm moving 